What's going on Jeep family and all you other off-roaders that clearly chose the wrong vehicle? It's Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets and today's video I'll be installing a set of Oxbeam RGB rock lights on my Jeep and I'm also going to compare them to my current rock light setup. Uh, so currently I'm running like a DIY rock light just with three pods underneath and some bolt style LEDs in the fender wells. They've worked well for me but it's time to get the cool RGB colorful lights that change in strobe lights so I can be like all the other cool hashtag kids on Instagram. I'm just kidding, I am a kid on Instagram, who am I fooling? Um, <laughs> but we're gonna install these, we're gonna check them out. I'm gonna wait a few hours here, it's about to get dark, throw some more cold ones back, and then we'll come back out with the camera and I'll show you guys my current rock light setup and then we'll dive straight on in to the install of these Oxbeam rock lights. So it's finally dark enough to uh, turn on the rock lights and actually get a decent uh, decent view. Uh, so those are the pot, the little uh, bolt lights I was talking about and underneath mounted is the uh, little pod lights. Like I said, I have three of those underneath and they run to a switch here on my pillar and to a relay and fuse under the hood. But they put out a decent light output. I've been happy with them. But the reason I'm making this video is because I've had a lot of requests from people uh, to me, for me to make a rock light video. This setup that I did, DIY was right around 60 bucks all in all. Uh, with the Oxbeam kit being $75, um, honestly, I think the Oxbeam is going to be a better bang for the buck, especially the ease of install. Um, plus, you know, you get the color changing options and all that other good stuff. But tomorrow, I am going to do the install, and then tomorrow night, we'll compare them side by side and see exactly which one puts out the better light. But as you can tell, rock lights, I mean, I'll, I'll talk a little bit real quick about why rock lights are awesome. If you ever off-road at night, you need to see what's to the side of your Jeep, what's near your tire, and for your spotter to see everything around you. So off-roading at night is definitely the number one option, or the, the number one reason for rock lights. Number two, camping. When you're setting up camp in a really dark area, you'd be extremely surprised how much light output this rock light setup actually puts out. So it's great for camping, setting up, and then another one, wrenching on your Jeep. So if you're working on your Jeep at night, you turn on your rock lights and I mean, you can pretty much see anything you need to under your Jeep if you're working on it. So those three options, definitely a good reason to get rock lights. But like I said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're gonna install them and then tomorrow night, we'll do the comparison. So I'm gonna go inside, probably go hop in the pool. Oh, there it is. The pool's calling my name, see you guys. All right, let's see what comes in the kit. I already opened it just to make sure all the parts were there. Um, but, like I said, this is the Oxbeam kit, eight-piece RGB rock light kit. Uh, right around $75, and like always, I'll throw the link in the description so you can check it out. Um, the controller, very simple, plugs right into your power source, and has all your plugs for your actual lights. Good thing about this kit is that there's really no, um, you know, electrical wiring needed. Only thing you can do is find a power source, plug it in, and then all the rock lights simply plug into the controller. Um, these rock lights are RGB, so what that means is you can change them different colors. Red, blue, green, yellow, purple, uh, white, and you know a mix of all in between. Uh, they do have a strobe option, so you can make them flash, you can make them slowly dim and fade, all different types of options. They are controlled via Bluetooth with your smartphone. So we're gonna download an app on our phone and that's how we're gonna control this. So that means there's no switches needed inside the cab of your vehicle, um, which is a you know positive and a negative at the same time. Some people don't like controlling stuff through their phone. They like to be able to flip a switch, but it's a trade off we get with this kit. It's gonna be an extremely simple install. The hardest part is gonna be able to figure out where we wanna mount these and how we're gonna mount them. Speaking of mounting, it comes with two rubber uh, pads that are going to go on the back side of the light between where we're mounting it. Um, so one's curved and one's flat. That's just going to depend on where we're mounting it. It also comes with screws and nuts, uh, little Allen heads. Um, I'd go ahead and pick up a set of self-tapping screws that go through here just because wherever we're going to mount them, there might not always be access to the back side to put a nut in. So I'm going to get a set or I'm gonna get a bag of uh, self-tapping screws that'll help with the install um, one thing I will mention they sell an eight-piece kit and a four-piece kit 
whatever kit you buy, you can't add on to it. Um, that's why I went with the eight, eight piece because I'd rather have more lights and you know have some left over opposed to only having four and then in the future not being able to upgrade. So eight lights should be plenty to light up you know the whole ground and everything on the Jeep. Let's uh, let's go ahead and dive on into the install. All right, so the first step of the install is to grab our control box and figure out where our power source is going to be coming from. If you want to wire it directly to the battery, I'd recommend adding an inline fuse. Uh, not recommend, you need to. Um, but if you already have a system that, like an S-Pod or one of those other, uh, you know, light control or, you know, electronic controller boxes that have all the power distribution and everything, those are already fused, so you can wire it straight, straight to that. But it is important to make sure it's on a fused system. So we're going to go ahead and hook this up to the power and leave this box loose just so we can find a place to you know, mount it and make sure all the lights are gonna reach all these plugs. So I'm gonna go do that under the hood and then we're gonna go grab the lights and figure out where we wanna mount them. We're gonna grab one of our lights and we're gonna run the cable to the furthest location we're gonna mount it. So mine is gonna be the driver's side inner fender well uh, on the rear. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a place that I kinda wanna mount it and then run this wire just to make sure that we have enough wire before I actually mount this. All right, so I just ran one of the first lights, and this is the end result. Um, on a four-door JKU, you'll have to mount them up here in the inner fender wells of the rear. I really wanted to mount it at the rear so it casts the light this way, but by the time you run the wire all the way down along the frame, pop up, and then across the engine bay, you just don't have enough line. But that also means for the rear light, um, I'm not going to be able to do it behind the bumper, uh, which I'm kind of bummed about because that's what I wanted to do, but no biggie. So the next location is going to be right underneath the Jeep. Uh, it's actually going to be a little bit forward of center line, just because on my Jeep it's going to be easiest place to mount. You have all these uh, little holes in the body, uh, kind of like the subframe part of the body. Uh, that's where I snaked my wires through, but I am going to mount the light right here just because that's going to be one of the easiest place I can get my fingers to to the back side uh, to tighten down the bolt and nut. Now, if you were to use a self-tapping screw, you could put it anywhere that you want. And then we are going to go get our base pad. Since this is a flat surface, we're going to use the flat pad. The pad has three channels the wire can go out the side kind of diagonal or straight through the middle you can choose what setup you want to run if you wanted to do it through the middle you would drill a bigger hole right here in the middle to run the wire through what I'm gonna do is simply mount it like this and then snake the wire under there so we're gonna grab the light and our bolt and the pad and stick the bolt through on the first hole we're gonna come up here hold it and then proceed to mark this side. And then, drill the hole. I'm gonna go ahead and mount both these mounts and then run the wire. All right, so I'm at the front of the Jeep trying to figure out a place to put it. I really didn't want to mount it on the bottom of the bumper here just because it's going to get smacked by a rock. Don't like using zip ties, but I think this spot is going to be okay with the zip tie. So I went ahead and drilled out the mounting holes on the rock light a little bit bigger, uh, put a zip tie through it, and I'm using the curved base. So I just zip tied it across this bar here. Yeah, you could use uh, self-tapping screws, but the zip ties are going to work for me in this location. Just finished up the install, went extremely smooth, very easy, but it's time to test them out. 
we're gonna open up our phone, use the app, and go through all the different options on these lights. All right, so let's do a real quick walkthrough on how to use these lights in the app. First, we're gonna go turn our Bluetooth on. On, cool. We're gonna go download the RGB remote app. One thing I will say is don't go off the instructions in the kit. Uh, go to their website if you're having a problem with the app because they are constantly, not constantly, but every once in a while they're going to change the app, one that's going to work better, and I don't know. They changed it up. I went to their website and got this app. So we're going to open it up and try to make sure the camera focuses good. The top left corner is the Bluetooth button. It is going to connect successfully. Press the check. I haven't had any connection issues. It's extremely easy. And press the power button. Boom. So it actually defaults to whatever light color you had on last time. So that's pretty cool. Even once you disconnect, it's always going to default to the color that you previously were on. So as you can tell, the screen, we have all different types of color options. Um, there's a lot to do here. I'm not going to get it. I'm just going to go over it real quick. If you want to change one of the default options, you just press and hold. Press the top clean button. Choose your color. Let's say we want pink. Press the finger and press check. So now pink is on our default screen. You can do that with any of these. Now the ones that have the multi colors are kind of like the fade colors. See how it's fading through red, green, then blue? You can speed that fade up and you can make it strobe. Uh, you can turn the power down, like the intensity of the light, make it dimmer or brighter. So there's a lot of different options. Now if we want to change that strobe, just like we did with the pink, press and hold, we're going to clean that off and we're going to choose our own colors. We're going to do red, white, blue, red, white, blue. Boom, we're going to check that. And as you can tell, it's strobing through red, white, and blue. Pretty cool. So you can do that. I mean, you can do like a little police red and blue flashing real quick. We can change out that intensity. We can slow, slow it down. So there's a lot you can do with this app. One thing you do need to remember is that you're going to have to press this power button to turn it off. If you disconnect from Bluetooth with it on, the lights are going to stay on. So make sure to turn off the power button on the app before you close it out and disconnect. So that's pretty cool. So I'm excited to uh, come out here tonight later and do like a light output comparison of them with, you know, between them and my rock lights currently. So it's finally dark enough to do the test. Let's go ahead and turn them on. Boom. I'm going to start with the red ones just because it looks sick. Especially like a couple minutes ago when it wasn't so dark out, you could see the Jeep too. And it was just an awesome mixture of uh, red on red. But let's go to the green, the blue, the orange, the pink or purple, another orange, one of the strobe options. Speed it up a little bit where it just goes through the colors. Um, here's some other options red and blue. And like I said, these are all just like custom ones I made. And then the flashing red and blue. Probably won't ever use these because it's highly illegal, but it's pretty cool. Might pr play some pranks on some guys. But here's the standard white ones. As you can tell, since they are RGB, it almost, especially the camera picks it up a lot more than in person. But it does have some other colors involved. Like there's like little hints of green and purple uh, just on the edge of where the light beam is. Uh, there's a gray setting which takes out a lot of those, but it's not as bright. But let's do the comparison. Here's the white. Let me go turn on my old rock lights and turn these off. So there's my old rock lights, and as you can tell, those definitely do have like a more solid white to them. But are they brighter? I don't think so. Especially when I turn on these rock lights. Look at how far these cast out compared to mine, my old ones. So as you can tell, they have a, definitely a wider beam. Uh, they're going to carry the light further. I'd highly recommend them. Uh, just looking at them, especially with all the different options of, uh, you know, different colors. It's, uh, I'd say it's pretty cool. You know, being able to change them to red, do, you know, strobe features, all that stuff. It's pretty cool, and especially having the option just to go to white. But let me talk about one thing I wish I did differently. All right, so on the driver's side, when I was mounting it right here in the middle, not really the middle, I talked about that, where I mounted it a little bit forward, um, the beam definitely is more prominent towards the front tire. Uh, on the passenger side, 
I did it differently and actually used a self-tapping screw right in the middle. So let me go show you the difference on the passenger side. Here on the passenger side, as you can tell, the beam is definitely centered a lot more to the Jeep. So I definitely recommend uh, just getting some self-tapping screws and go ahead and center it. But, I mean, you can kind of tell the different color lights. But, I mean, when you're on the trails, those little bit of lights aren't going to hurt you. Um, it really lights up the area. I would definitely go with the eight piece kit just because uh, four, honestly, I don't think would be enough. But this hit really lights up pretty much my whole carport. And even the red, I mean, I don't know if I'd use that on the trail. I might use like orange, uh, definitely not green. But, you know, the colors are extremely bright. And I definitely say this is a good upgrade. And honestly, if I were to do it again, I would go with these. So, pleased with the install, super simple, and it turned out awesome. sums it up for 75 bucks I'd highly recommend this kit the uh, the light outputs great the color options are even cooler and you know the, the ease of install is what really makes this kit you know highly recommendable compared to you know doing your own rock lights um, like always I'll throw the link in the description so you can go check it out for yourself uh, what I've noticed most of the negative reviews are dealing with the app and the Bluetooth settings but like I said before don't go off the app that the instructions say go to their website and download the most recent app that they recommend um, one thing I change about this kit is I'd make the, the wires a little bit longer so you could reach the rear on the four doors and those of you that are putting these on trucks or other SUVs but you can change that by either moving the control box or trying to lengthen those wires I'm sure there's some YouTube videos out there on how to uh, you know splice the wires and make them longer for RGB lights um, but Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you will. Subscribe if you're a new viewer. Uh, welcome to the channel. Got a lot of Jeep videos and off-road videos, so check them out. Subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notifications when I post a new video. But got a lot of new videos that should be dropping soon. Got a lot of work to do to the Jeep. And I'm actually doing an event competition coming up. So stay tuned for some news on that. I'll talk about it. I'm extremely stoked to do it. And I have a good buddy of mine that's going to be competing with me. So we'll talk about that hopefully in the next episode or two. So stay tuned. Thanks, guys. Bye.